Hello, thank you, Simon and Irena, for joining me in this call. Today we have, or right now we have Simon and Irena from the European Big, from the Big Data Value Association, speaking to us about a report towards a European data sharing space. We'll, today we will discuss what first the organization BDBA is, and also what motivated them to research a pan-European data sharing space. In addition, we will look into what they discovered in their report focusing a lot on the legal and technical aspects explored and the recommendations they can provide based on their research and looking into what's next in, for data sharing in Europe. I give you both the floor to introduce yourselves. Well, okay, I can introduce myself first, if it's okay. Um, so yes, I, I, I am a, a member of the Fraunhofer Institute EIES. Uh, this is one of the data um, institutes of Fraunhofer, there are 72. Fraunhofer Institutes, um, and uh, I'm also involved in the Big Data Value Association. We're on the board of directors there since uh, the beginning of the establishment of the association. Um, so my interest and my background is uh, maybe closer to the semantic interoperability, uh, how to exchange data, how to facilitate the exchange of data, uh, how to make this easier, basically from a technical perspective. Um, this goes to the direction of knowledge graphs, uh, linked data. Um, so the, the discussions at the BDVA, of course, um, they have always been about data, about big data, and uh, more recently uh, about artificial intelligence and how to um, produce or make available data um, so that uh, AI um, has enough uh, yeah, power. Um, and I think in the last years, uh, this, let's say, shift of focus in BDVA has been very, very clear. Um, not only BDVA, of course, it's, um, um, I, I think internationally, there, there's a huge interest in AI increasing in the last years. Um, and our activities, therefore, looked into, let's see why um, or how we can make more data available. Um, and I think this is uh, an interest uh, that we have in the association, but in my case, uh, for sure, not only in, in, in the association, um, how to make data accessible, how to make data available, and what are the obstacles that need to be addressed. Um, yeah, I think that's a short uh, introduction. Thank you, Irene. Irena? Yeah, so um, I work for a digital transformation agency called Blue Specs. Right. I joined very recently, a couple of months ago. Uh, in this current role, uh, what I do is help corporates and, and governments to with the digital transformation strategies, particularly around data and the data value chain. In my previous role, I was part of the founding team of a protocol, of um, a crypto uh, protocol, blockchain protocol called Ocean. And, uh, and there I was very much involved into building partnerships for building the Web3 using the protocol that uh, we were building um, based on the premise uh, that open source protocols will be the one of the founding uh, pillars of the future Web3 and more open um, privacy preserving and um, a people centric uh, internet. Uh, I joined the Big Data Value Association uh, three jobs ago when I was at the Digital Catapult uh, and I've been following the evolution of the um, membership and the, the network. Uh, when um, I heard there was an opportunity to work around data sharing with uh, the likes of Simon who is leading this effort internally, uh, I thought it was a really good opportunity to put uh, to work my my ideas and my network and the things that I've been learning about data sharing for the last six seven years um, and here here I am and I'm glad you are let me kick it off then with the first question what so now you've explained what the big data value association the BDBA is and why it started to look into data sharing can you say what inspired the report yeah, and as I as I kind of hinted before, so like the the BDVA has also had a significant shift of focus towards AI um, and um, making um, more data available. Uh, this 
raises the value of the data, right? So big data value associations is essentially the mission of BDVA is to see or to promote and get uh, entities together to uh, raise the value of data and uh, making data available in this case to be exploited uh, for AI uh, technology and, and innovation is, is, one, is one way how to get there. Um, but yes, without data, this let's say AI um, race uh, will be will be stunted. Okay. Um, initially, there was a lot of talk about uh, sharing open data. Okay. Um, and I think what a lot of uh, entities, including Sandport Center for Data Sharing, uh, noted is that whatever was working for open data can also be, of course, with some effort adapted for non-open or proprietary data, how, how to enable exchange in this case, not sharing for free, of course, necessarily. Um, so I think uh, the BVA recognized the need to, to um, see what these various efforts and initiatives are already uh, emerging, um, how they can work together, how they can converge to, um, and maybe take the mediation role as BDVA to converge these activities. Um, taking advantage of the BDVA's, of course, uh, large um, cross-sectoral membership in different verticals, um, and also it's recognized political standing to do so. Um, so I think the reason for the report is essentially to that, to start uh, a, a good first solid step to uh, promote such conversions of these activities. And when you started this, did you have any hypothesis or thoughts already when you entered into the research of the report? Um, yes, I mean, by uh, discussing already with the various members, uh, maybe not in the frame of a data sharing space within the DVDA, but within another related frame, it was indeed clear that uh, a lot of entities had an interest um, to participate in data sharing activities, and they also saw the potential and the advantage. Uh, this could be an additional uh, way how to generate revenue by selling data or an additional way how to create or, or adapt their business models to provide new uh, solutions by accessing or obtaining other data. Um, so there was a lot of understanding that this is needed. Uh, at the same time, there was a lot of knowledge that people are scared to do so. And, some of the challenges were obvious, okay? So we knew uh, when we started going there that uh, there will be this and that challenge which will show up a lot. Um, but the more we looked into it, the more we saw additional challenges and tried to slowly uh, make sense of whatever we had assumed uh, at the start. I think this is also the same experience for Irene. Yeah, and yeah, and um, I would like to add also that um, part of the inspiration for the report was to show that the BDVA community is very much involved in different different forms and different technology support in data sharing across Europe, um, and then different say, innovation spectrum. Uh, we have many people from research. And academia and applied research, but we also have industry that is um, is working on this. And through many of the partnerships and collaborations within Horizon 2020 uh, projects, um, the um, it is obvious that data sharing is, is at the heart of many of the activities. So if we look at data sharing as a um, as a, as a good metaphor to talk about the development and application of AI. Um, it, it is clear that, that many of the partners of the association are, are working on that space. I think that's, um, that's, uh, that's at the heart of, of why this report was um, a born or commissioned by the board of directors, right, Simon? Because this was something that it was, um, it was something that was asked, requested from the board of directors to do, a, you know, kind of like a landscape uh, rec recognition, yeah? Yeah, uh, exactly. Um, and may maybe what uh, we, we did not add yet to, 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 to this is that um, this was all done in, with the understanding that like uh, Europe needs uh, data sharing and uh, this could be 
well, we should try to achieve this at European level for these reasons. Um, but nonetheless, or, or even especially, because uh, I think Europe's um, strength does not lie maybe in the uh, large multinationals that we have based here, but more like in the diversity. So the quantity and diversity of the uh, various uh, stakeholders that small businesses included. Um, and for, you know, for them to, to become competitive, then um, this data sharing between them is crucial. So I think this is something else. Uh, why, why at European level um, answers the question as well. Okay. Good to understand. I think we're all, we were very in line that um, data sharing is the heart of a lot of things and it's very important with how it is going forward. But you also in, brought up an interesting point about um, different fears and looking at different challenges that arose to starting and continuing with data sharing and that more came up the more you investigated. How did you address or do, try to alleviate these fears or challenges that came up when discussing with different stakeholders? Um, well, uh, as, as, as kind of uh, I hinted already, um, a lot of the, let's say, technical solutions are already available or they're quite mature. Uh, which we talked about like, I don't know, privacy preserving technology, for example, maybe it's not uh, fully mature yet, uh, but it's in going in the right direction. So I think a lot of the stakeholders understand that the biggest challenges are um, perhaps related to the data governance, yeah, the, the governments and, and, and um, absence or the presence of uh, regulations. Um, so regulations can make them um, fear uh, looking into the possibility of data sharing, but the lack of regulation can also make them fear and feeling insecure. Yeah, uh, what are the risks? What are they going into? So. Um, the focus, let's say, or when, when we started looking into the challenges, it, it became clear and clear that the, the biggest challenge was not technical, but this kind of like a policy governance, these kinds of difficulties. That leads nicely to another set of questions. Um, so policy and governance were something you identified as a challenge. How, what um, recommendations did you come up with in your report or based on what you had heard and investigated to alleviate this or recommendations to work towards alleviating it at least? Okay, so from the recommendations that, that we have, um, they're not necessarily structured in, in, this, in this form now, but I think the most um, interesting ones uh, for this the context of this current discussion is uh, how to how to address ownership okay and i think as irene also can uh, share we had a lot of uh, discussions um, about how data ownership is legally difficult to define uh, so yeah. when, when yeah when, when we when we speak about data ownership um, if you go to the lawyers they're going to scratch their head as like what is data ownership? We don't know, it's difficult, or we might know, but it's difficult to legally define. How is own ownership transferred? Uh, when does it expire? So these are the kind of, let's say, core difficulties. So the recommendation, we tried to, um, let's say, address this as one of the main uh, issues, or, or let's say, uh, challenges, is to perhaps, uh, first of all, we have to guarantee data sovereignty, okay? So entities participating in data sharing have to have the peace of mind that they will not lose control uh, over their data, okay, um, as much as possible. Um, and the way to get there, rather than maybe talking about uh, <clears throat> ownership, is to talk about data rights um, management, which is less, uh, let's say, controversial and more pragmatic. Um, so of course this could be part of a, let's say foolproof uh, data governance framework uh, together with, uh, I don't know, um, technology which says security and privacy by design. So it's a whole lot of things around it. But I think yeah, the main recommendation going in this direction is let's guarantee data sovereignty um, and data rights management is maybe 
the best way to get there. I think Irene, you, you also uh, probably have something to add here. Yeah, I mean, we discussed um, we discussed for, for, for a very long time the need of a data sharing framework that would be shared at the European level. Yeah, and that includes not only, as Simon just said, the technical bits, but also the governance and, and the legal bits, but governance in the, in the sense of um, how the different parties relate to each other under which conditions and how the technology can help and enable to support that trust yeah, and, um, and make, it, make it happen yeah, uh, and enforce it. So part of the discussion technically was also around the, what I mentioned at the beginning, the open source technologies, how to enable the higher number of parties to come into play and play and being able to do data sharing for real. And um, uh, how to ensure and, and enforce a number of characteristics that can enable that uh, a steady for trust in the in the data um, life cycle. Yeah, how data moves around and is uh, um, shared. Yeah, um, and the, this is an important point. We didn't quite agree on what was the best way to do this, but I think we agreed that uh, overall it should be something worth investing time and effort to have a, a European shared view around this. So we discuss technologies like blockchain and DLTs, for example, yeah? Uh, and there are a few examples out there. So the previous organization that I was working for was developing a, such technology, for example, alongside others that are developing similar ones. Yeah? Uh, Fraunhofer is also in a very large initiative called IDSA that, that does this, and there are other protocols that are um you know doing these type of things but um yeah i mean i think that's all i have to say in in for this particular point that's already a lot thank you and so this is a lot already but legal moving to the technical because you had already mentioned that the technical is um the solutions are more or less available if not um are maturing or reaching a level of maturity what um are there any technical challenges that you explored in the report? I think, can I, can I say something here before, just to, uh, yes, uh, Simon? Um, so I, I think here we need, to, we need to differentiate two levels of technical discussion, yeah? So um, there is the, the basic research, yeah, the, the, around a specific technical challenges that still are not solved, yeah? And I, I, I don't think we went very deep into those, right, Simon? Um, well, the, the, by the first, second person, maybe not. No, exactly. So, I mean, until now, that, that wasn't part of the exercise. Yeah, so the very deep technical aspects that uh, need to be further explored and invested, I mean, research uh, efforts should be invested uh, uh, in, in it. So we discussed technical challenges that came from the more... I would dare, I dare to say more practical challenges of data sharing. So how to, what type of technologies and what type of technological approaches we need to bring together to enable data sharing. And by, it's not just helping data to be moved around, it's helping data to be moved around, preserving privacy and making it a trusted exercise if that makes sense, yeah, for everybody in this call. And that was something that, that we discussed uh, far and, and, and long. And the, the, te the technologies are mostly there. And what we, we, we have seen, and, and we know, because that's, that's part of our experience, is that technology is not a problem. Yeah? The problem are typically the reticence of organizations in sharing data. Yeah, and they are not completely happy and, and feel secure in doing it. And this was something that was a continuous part of the, of the discussion. So if we can use some technologies to help overcome those fears, and we could potentially, what are the further challenges that are presented? Organizations and governments are mo mostly, they are not prepared to use the technologies that can help with that trusted aspect. And we are talking specifically about open source blockchain stuff, yeah? 
uh, and we are beginning to see a change of minds in, in this respect, but it's still quite quite not there. So people think that data sharing is easy, that you know you, everybody can do it, and that um, you know if Amazon and Google do it, why why other organizations cannot take advantage of it and make money out of it? And what most people don't realize is that your organization needs to be very mature from a digital point of view to take advantage of of certain technologies in 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 most of the industry and most of most governments are not no not another view maybe just uh, something to add um, but by doing so i might jump to your next question so because i wanted to say mm -hmm. there, there are some related recommendations uh, mm -hmm. related to the technical let's say um, findings but first uh, so there were two levels that you didn't discuss i was i have heard one i think was one level did you also no, discuss? I, oh. So, so the, 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 the levels are the, the very deep technical challenges okay. Okay. are more on the research uh, side. Uh, and, and those were not uh, addressed by the report, not, not in its current version. Yeah. The other side of the technical challenges are the more, let's say, technical, but applied technical challenges are, are driven by business needs. So businesses do want to share and they find difficulties that are not necessarily technical, but more of the, the maturity of their uh, organizations to absorb digital technologies. Okay. So that's why I talk about two different, two levels of technical challenges. The more research oriented things that are not solved yet, and for the technologies that are already there and available and can be used, mm -hmm. the problem is not the technology, the problem is in, in a, a to, to very high level or at a high degree, the, the maturity of the organizations. Thank you for clarifying that. Um, and yes, Simon, linking to the next question about recommendations that uh, you gathered from this investigation. Yeah, so I think there are two very relevant recommendations. Um, one um, is, of course, so as, as Irene was saying, like the technical means, let's say, maybe are there or being developed, but when you go to an application uh, stage, um, other uh, challenges appear. So one of, let's say, one group of these challenges is linked to, to policy yeah? and again, regulations. So uh, what, what can happen and what does happen is uh, entities try or let's say, okay, we want to uh, innovate, we want to now uh, look into sharing data, we want to look into combining our data with other uh, entities' data, um, and then uh, somehow maybe their legal department stops them or someone else stops them and say, hey, you know, by doing this, uh, you're going to be liable for this and that if you don't do things in the proper order. And they kind of like freeze, okay, and they, they, they face face uh, the fear that, okay, then let's not do anything because we don't want to end up in trouble. Okay, so this is a bit the general, at the, at the application level. So even though the technology is there, when, when, when it's applied, okay, so it's going more towards legal again, okay, um, then, then they, they, they do not invest further. So one of the first uh, recommendations that we have is to consider European-wide uh, regulatory sandboxes, okay. Um, where perhaps, uh, which means uh, perhaps um, uh, entities participating in data sharing or data exchange um, can do so with limited or with uh, not the actual data or not the real data or not the full data um, as a sandbox um, and they can experiment with this. Uh, so they have the means to do so without uh, running into trouble. Uh, because at the moment, um, especially with GDPR, but not only GDPR, if uh, you break the regulation, then you're in trouble, okay? Uh, but there are some exceptions, and uh, at the level of having entities trying to participate in data sharing activities, you can tell them, okay, um, play with this, try, try to do some innovation. They will be scared to do so. So the pur purpose of our recommending European-wide regulatory sandboxes is to give them a bit of like a safe, safer space um, to 
uh, incentivize them to invest in uh, or, or look into new business and innovation models, uh, de-risking the whole thing, and so as not to stop the, them from reaching the full potential from an innovation in the technological perspective. Um, so yeah. th that's, that was the first uh, recommendation, which is relevant. And the other one is, uh, I think Irene also hinted at this already, is the data life cycle, okay? So at present, uh, very few entities um, consider data sharing as one of the steps uh, in their data life cycle. Okay, so I don't know, I might have a company or I might have an institution and data is being generated. Uh, this could be a scientific institution, right? This could be business, doesn't really matter. Or it could be a personal uh, customer um, and I have data which I can make available uh, for something in return to, to, to business. That's also fine. Um, but what, what is not um, very clear uh, is that um, in some cases, when this data is being generated, there has not been, been any foresight that this data could be shared in the future. So now that data sharing becomes more and more real or closer to, to what we need today, um, people should start thinking, the data that my business or my entity is producing, let's start from the very start, from the very start of the creation process. Think about think data about sharing data. possibilities. Um, not only think about this as an afterthought, okay, oh, I have data which I created a year ago, now I can sell it, for example. But think from the very start, hey, this data which we're generating here, in this process, we could also earmark it for sharing because it brings value in some um, um, context. Um, so our recommendation is even small players, by doing this like, you know, foresight, thinking, um, putting data sharing in the center of the data life cycle, they can facilitate what can emerge in the future in terms of a shared data space for sharing. So this is one of the, let's say, the, uh, another key requirement that we have. Okay, thank you for the very detailed actual recommendations and for explaining and um, deboxing, unboxing them. So taking another step back and looking at the wider picture of the research, what kind of data sharing models did you explore? Because you investigate and talk to different stakeholders. Did you focus on B2B, B2G, B2D? Any combination uh, thereafter? Yes. Um, Irene, may I? Yes, sure. <laughs> I, I don't want to dominate. <laughs> no, 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 Simon. I mean, this is something that you've been very much involved in December. This was, this was part of the discussions of the last workshop. So please. Yeah, well, in short, uh, I think in the first, let's say, rounds uh, leading to the first reports, um, as, as, I, as I said before, right, uh, we knew there, was, uh, there were initiatives between private industry, there were initiatives on open data, um, but what we felt was missing is convergence of all of, all of these initiatives into something broader, okay? So when we started this, let's say, uh, let's call it research, uh, we did not want to focus it too much. So we started really asking all kinds of uh, entities, be it scientific uh, universities, business, of course, large and small, uh, government and public bodies as well, and also private citizens, uh, maybe not talk, uh, talking to private citizens, but people who represent them. Okay, what are their interests and what, what could be the, the, the opportunities for them? Um, and we continued this, and I think only now uh, that we are going to get closer to the second version of the report, have we started looking into specific, let's say, uh, data sharing um, models, I think you call them. So we will retain business at the center, let's say, so it's business centric. Um, but indeed, we are now starting to ask some specific questions. And the reason is because uh, potential solutions to, to identify challenges, we have already identified, are highly de dependent on the partners, okay, of the data exchange or the data sharing. So in the second report, we're now looking into uh, anything from uh, B2B, okay, not only B2B, but B2G, C2B, uh, B2S, uh, SOC means uh, citizen, right, as customer, 
uh, and S means science and G means of course governance. So anything um, with, let's say, maybe a bit more biased towards business. So with business at the center. And this will uh, show up uh, in, in the second version, not too in depth, but we hope that the second version of the paper can then be, let's say, uh, first step to have uh, individual focused uh, mm -hmm. studies. Okay, and when can we expect version two or the next version of the report? Uh, yeah. The plan is early spring this year, yeah. <laughs> okay. It should be one year from the first version. Okay, so in the next few months. Exactly. Okay, there's a lot of work to do between now and then. So. Indeed. <laughs> so then it's taking out of a, a step even out of your research. What, um, where do you see data sharing in Europe a few years from now? You can pick three, five, 10, 15, four. So I go ahead. Well, actually, we see, we see data sharing happening mm -hmm. at the minute. Yeah, it's just, it's just not happening at the scale that it should be happening. Uh, so what we, well, at least I hope, sorry about that. What I personally hope is to see to see it more, um, more more of an activity that can be done by by pretty much any organization that the um, the barrier of entry to use the technology is very very low so anybody can really use technology that is open source that is free uh, and the new business models are enabled because of that and because of um, the adoption of technology like DLTs and blockchain that can help with that trusted trustworthiness of the systems. Now, um, this sounds very easy, but it is not. It is not easy at all. So, people like yourselves, yeah, uh, support center for data sharing at, at European level. I think I think you guys have a very big um, uh, role in in increasing the awareness on the technologies. Yeah, maybe with the help of groups like us that can identify the technologies. Yeah, but it's raising awareness of what technologies are available, what type of business models can be built on open source technologies. And this is my personal take, and this is the point that I've been trying to put across the, the, um, the paper. And uh, make it, um, educate the C-suit in organizations, and I'm talking about the small, large and governments, about the potential of, of data sharing done properly, yeah? and the potential for, for increasing the competitiveness of businesses. So this is not just to, I don't, think, I don't think anybody in the group that Simon and I belong to believes that they say, for example, marketplaces are the only tool to share data. Yeah, it's just something that, it's, it sounds easy. You know, whether you buy and sell goods and products in the real world in markets, so well, let's have a, Data, data, data sharing marketplaces. I think the picture is going to get a lot more interesting in the next few years uh, with these new tools ma made available because what is not possible at the moment is to be creating imaginative and an entrepreneur in this space just because those technologies are not available for the majority. And um, we also talk about um, making AI more um, let's say available for everybody. People talk about democratizing the access to AI, but it's not just the access, it's also the development of AI. So we believe, and this group believes that uh, the more data um, available to use and experiment with, the, the easier will be to, for, for um, better, call better, define better the way you want AI um, for everybody. Yeah, and that is something. So it's not just data sharing for the sake of moving data around. Is data sharing to develop better AI and uh, enabling new ways of doing this data sharing, this moving data and creating value around of data that uh, we believe we can we can help with technologically. But uh, there is a big barrier culturally uh, in organizations to use data in proper ways. I think Irene covered pretty much. Maybe I just want to emphasize what something that Irene already said is that indeed, uh, when we were uh, talking to various entities within and outside of BDVA, I think there is a very, let's say, shared understanding that data sharing has to happen. 
and it will happen. It's already happening. Um, and the alternatives, uh, such as, for example, working with artificial data, they, it's unlikely that they will become as reliable, right? We need real data. Um, and to tie in then to what I said earlier is that as, you, as Europeans, you know, as Europe, uh, our strength is in, in numbers, not in large numbers, but in diversity and, uh, and the numbers, and they have to come together. And data sharing is how to make that happen if, if, if business at the European primarily level um, want to compete internationally as well. Thank you for the positive note, additional positive note. Then I think I can conclude. Uh, thank you both again for participating and I look forward to seeing your reports come live in a few months. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.